If you haven't watched the first tutorial on the viewport speed up, then definitely recommend watching that first because that will go through uh, changing your viewport, removing all the clutter, optimizing your settings so that um, your playback is nice and fast, um, and also things like collapsing your object down, um, removing deformers, generators, expressions, those kind of things. But of course, we need things like deformers to create a lot of the effects that we have um, and, and generators and things like that. So this tutorial here is about working with deformers and how we can speed things up by caching it. And you can also do this with uh, generators and other types of animation. But um, I just want to show you how you can do that specifically working with deformers. And it's a really simple scene. Um, and I've, if I just show you the edges, um, let me just you can see I've got a really dense mesh here just to kind of make it more obvious with the speed up but if you had a scene with lots of objects and you optimized everything all over the place it would be the same so you can see we've got this plane let's just hide those edges and I've got a displacer on here to kind of create this sort of flag effect and then another one to create this secondary effect and then a smoothing deformer just to sort of smooth that all out and I think I've got this set to yeah 200 iterations so it's kind of crazy um, settings um, we just really want to make this obvious the, the speed differences and then I've also got like a jiggle deformer on the end which will help to add a little bit of wobble and inertia to your animation and you can see it's playing back pretty slowly so if we come up to the frames per second plugin that I've got in the interface and if you don't know how to access that you just press shift C to bring up your commander and you can press FPS frames per second there it is and you can access it that way um, so I'm just going to click to do the animation test. Um, in fact, let's just set this to be 124 frames. So it's a bit quicker. And then this is going to run through the scene. It's going to calculate our frames per second for us. And we can see really how slow this scene is. Um, but I think you get a pretty good idea. So the calculate frames per second plugin is um, very accurate, much more accurate using the heads up display. So if you do want to see how fast your scene is, it's definitely the best way of doing it. So we've calculated that and it's telling us that over those 125 frames it's 6.15 frames per second which is not great considering there's only one object in the scene. So we've got a jiggle deformer on here and one of the cool things about the jiggle deformer is very often you place it last. Um, obviously your deformers are executed in this order. You place that at the end to add that kind of jiggle inertia effect but the jiggle deformer has got a caching built in um, and caching your deformers is going to speed things up considerably it doesn't have to calculate all of that so once you've got it set up just hit calculate it's going to run through the scene and uh, calculate all of that it will increase the file size um, but there are also other benefits from doing this such as it will render correctly if you network render or use a render farm um, and m probably the most important thing is it's going to make a huge difference to the speed of your files so we're almost done you can see there's a lot of points on that mesh that's 150 meg um, but once you've done that you can actually switch all these other deformers off because they're not needed anymore and now you know like I can scrub through look how fast I'm scrubbing but the real test is the animation test and let's click that and you can see boom so we've gone from around six frames a second to 105 frames a second just by calculating the cache on that object which is pretty good really so you might be thinking, well, what if I'm not using a jiggle deformer in my scene, then this solution isn't going to work for me, which is fair enough. But you can actually set this to, um, you know, have no strength or, or just set all the parameters down so it doesn't do anything, which would be one way of getting around it. But there are other solutions. So let's just have a look at a couple of other ways that we can cache things. So I'm going to delete that. Um, and uh, let's just do an animation test again without the jiggle deformer. I think it will be a tiny bit quicker because the jiggle deformer obviously does need to calculate stuff. Yeah, it's quite a bit quicker. Okay, so we've got 10, nearly 11 frames a second now. It's pretty slow still. Um, so one thing we can do is use the point cache. So if we right click on the plane and choose character tags, point cache, adds a tag to your object. The first thing you need to do is just store the state of the object. Once you've done that, you can just click calculate runs through and stores the position of all of those points. You can also use this to uh, calculate the position scale and rotation. You just have to remember to check the box at the top there. Otherwise, it's only going to calculate the point position. Once it's done that, you can see it's 150 meg, pretty much the same as before. Now the object looks a bit weird 
because it's using the point cache but then it's also deforming it on top of that again so if we switch those off you can see we're back to where we were before and now if we run the animation test you can see boom it's pretty quick it's unusual that it's only 88.9 frames a second whereas the other one was like 100 so it's not quite as fast as using the jiggle deformer but you can still see it's like eight nine times faster than not caching the solution so if you don't want to use a jiggle and you're working with a point object like this you can use the um, point cache expression one of the nice features working with point cache tag is that there's also a deformer it's in the character menu here um, obviously it has to be a child and you drag the tag into this field but the point cache deformer allows you to also use fall off and because it's a deformer you can place it in the hierarchy and you can have that animation happen when you want it to so you can also use it in combination with other deformers so that gives you quite a lot of creative possibilities um, let's just select the tag and empty that cache so that we are back to uh, let me hit restore to restore our shape um, and then I'm just going to delete that you have to just be careful because it's an expression if you just delete it without restoring it then you end up with your mesh distorted um, so that's the only thing with using expressions they can be a little bit destructive uh, let's enable these deformers again I'm going to just bring up my timeline and show you another way of caching this or baking it out and we can just grab our object drop it in the timeline let's select this choose functions bake objects so the bake objects command is very useful um, it will work with pretty much any animation you can see that we can set the range of frames we can bake expressions so if you are um, using uh, a, a tag of some kind to create your animation you can bake that out you can create a copy which is pretty handy because it will keep the original and you can make sure that any animation on the, or any tracks on that object are removed so we get clean tracks and you can bake all parameters PSR PLA which is point level animation or any animated parameters as well within parametric objects um, things like that so let's just uncheck all of these all we really want to do here is bake the point level animation I'm going to create a copy um, so let's click OK. It's going to chug its way through. And the thing with this approach is it's actually going to create keyframes for us as well. Whereas on the other options, the tags um, store the information there. OK, so you can see it's created a copy for us. It's left all of these deformers on there, but we don't need those anymore. We can actually delete those. And let's take our original object. Um, and really, for the true test, we should actually delete that as well so that we just have our plane here and you can see we've got all these keyframes and you could use those for um, some other creative technique um, if you want keyframes um, and you can see there we go there's our animation so the nice thing with the bake objects is it works with pretty much all objects so you can use this not just on point level animation but on lots of other types of animation so let's use our animation test and just see how fast it is now and boom there we go so we've got nearly 85 frames a second so you know you can see that by baking your animations you can really really save a huge amount of time and um, once you've finished animating an object then just bake it out and then move on to the next thing and your scenes will stay nice and fast and everything will be very efficient so caching definitely a good way to speed up your workflow and one last thing is that although we're not covering it in this tutorial um, if you work with dynamics or cloth or you work with MoGraph then all of these features they also have their own caching options so um, for instance control D for my project settings under dynamics you can see that we have a caching option here and also the dynamics tag has the option to cache um, there's a MoGraph cache tag um, cloth has caching built into the tag as well so there are many different ways to bake and cache your objects and um, it's definitely something that you should include in your workflow.